Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Moltrap, and I'm going to be doing a set of games for you today. Hopefully I'll be able to get through all of them. I think I should be able to get through all of the STX uh, Masters Cup Finals. That's what this is going to be. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to this. Basically, the STX Masters Cup is just kind of a random uh, excuse for more games and um, you know teams pitting against each other. I honestly don't know how... Uh, the, it works in, in the grand scheme of things. I think it's basically just kind of like they just throw some teams into a sort of a playoff situation and at the end they have to face STX, I believe, uh, since it's the STX Masters Cup. Um, and in the past there have been like, you know, uh, other teams have hosted or whatever. Uh, in any case, this is uh, between STX and NBC and um, if it's some kind of elimination style, I'm really not sure how NBC got into this final because they don't have any players anymore and uh, part of the uh, evidence of that is the fact that Jehun is going to be playing first for NBC he's a Protoss player and um, you know he doesn't really play much he's never as, I don't think he's been in any individual leagues if, if he has it's only been maybe like round of 32 or something like that he's actually gonna be playing up against July Zerg and the, if you don't know the format of these um, show matches it's whoever wins goes on and plays the next person. And it, so theoretically, the same person could just get four kills in a row and um, own the other team. Um, but I don't think that's happened yet. Uh, in any case, yes, moving on. First, before I get too much into the game, though, I want to say a couple things. I've actually got several things that I want to say, but I don't know if I'll have time in this game, so I'll try and fit them in the next games if I have to. But um, uh, I, I know... Um, well, first of all, I want to apologize for not doing a ton of commentaries these days, even though I technically have time off. Um, part of the reason is that, um, as I've alluded to before, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of, yeah, not really in a stable position right now. I don't really have my own apartment. I'm crashing at my dad's house part of the time. I'm crashing at friends' houses. Um, so I, it's, I can't be yelling at my computer at all hours of the night, which I usually would do when I have my own apartment because I, then I would be disturbing people. So I kind of have to take my commentaries where I can get them. And I've also been doing some job hunting and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, my life is a, a little bit weird at the moment. I've, I've just finished a, um, a graduate degree uh, to get a specific kind of job. And no, I'm not going to tell you what kind of job it is. If you know, please don't say it. I just, just want to keep that uh, on the down low. But uh, I can't seem to get that kind of job, unfortunately. And it's not due to lack of qualification. It's just problems with the economy and what have you. So... Anyway, I'm thinking of writing a book, actually. So if anyone, uh, since <laughs> since the job isn't working out, if anyone knows any literary agents or, or publishers or anything like that, uh, editors, let me know. Uh, in any case, so we've got, uh, this is this is uh, the Map Coliseum, by the way. And uh, we've got July Zerg starting in the bottom right-hand corner. And we've got um, Jehun starting in the top left-hand corner. And July Zerg, uh, interestingly enough, is actually sending his overlord kind of towards the middle uh, so if he if he continues that direction, he may find Jehun in the top left, but it looks like he's curving it to the north. Um, he was just checking for proxies, I believe, uh, see if any proxies were being put in the middle of the map uh, before um, going to check the corners for check the spawns and what have you. Uh, so and then we have Jehun going actually for a two gate build here, um, and Julies are going for a, a twelve hatchery build. So so this could be a this could put July Zerg in a little bit of trouble. Um, he's going to put down his pool next, I expect, but uh, it still might be a problem for him if he's not prepared for uh, two gateways worth of zealots. Now, he's got plenty of time. I'm not saying he's doomed or anything like that. Uh, he's got the time to um, get prepared for this, but he's going to need to do something here pretty quick um, if he's going to be prepared because there's going to be zealots heading towards his base in just a minute, um, and he's going to have to get something down. He's not going to have lings out Quite, he's he might barely be able to get Lings out, but I think he's probably going to have to somehow find this, anticipate it, um, and uh, get, maybe get a sunken down or something like that, uh, because it's, it's not going to be good for him. To, it's it's a uh, even if you know it's coming, it's still difficult to fend off uh, mass zealots with zerglings alone, especially if they can get massed up into a group of uh, three, four, five, uh, or more. And oh, Julies are going for another hatchery. Uh, in his third base, you're going for a massive econ build here, and uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be prepared for this. Um, 
And Jehun massing his zealots in the middle there. I think probably when he has those three, he'll probably move out. Uh, but it's hard to say. Uh, he may tr decide to mass more because part of this build is that, yeah, there's the three. And um, part of this build is that if you just send in the one, then they'll be expecting it and then they'll be able to build defenses. So it, it's actually much more powerful if you have uh, a few zealots gathered together. And uh, so that's exactly what he's doing. He, he doesn't want to reveal his hand until he has at least a few zealots there. So now three zealots coming in here. July Zerg is going to spot that with a Zergling. Um, he doesn't quite have enough Zerglings at this point in time. This could be very disastrous for July Zerg. He's probably going to start pumping uh, Zerglings out of his uh, three hatcheries. He's building a, a colony up at the top, and it looks like he's actually canceled that hatchery, that third hatchery. Um, wise move by him. So yeah, he's building colonies at actually both of his bases. If he can hold off those zealots long enough to get those colonies built, uh, this may be advantageous for Jelizerg, actually. Um, surrounding those zealots with drones, beautiful drone micro there, um, just basically screwing up the AI of, of the zealots while the uh, the drone with the drones uh, while he gets his sunken colony up. The sunken colony is going to go up his main, one going up in his natural as well. So if he can get those going up, then uh, he'll just have to focus on protecting those with Zerglings. He did lose a few Zerglings that exchange. Uh, Zealot's coming up. Oh, nice. couple Zerglings coming out just in time to block for that sunken colony. Beautiful, beautiful timing. Um, I mean, obviously it wasn't choreographed or anything, but it just worked out really well for his July Zerg. And uh, there's the, the hero coach, I think, looking a little bit uh, perturbed by this turn of events. Jehun persisting with the two gates here, finally putting down a Cyber Next Core. Um, and a July Zerg, it looks like he's going to try and counterattack. He's got some Zerglings uh, heading towards Jehun's base. He's going to probably try and do some probe damage. He knows that most of his Zealots are back out at um, his own base. Uh, so July Zerg is hoping he can squeeze in something there and, and get a couple... If he can pick off some probes, that would be that would basically clinch the game for him. Here he is going in. Looks like he's actually going to use some... Um, um, uh, try and use the fact that those zealots are nowhere in the area to try and take down one of these gateways. If he can take down a gateway, that would be pretty good too. But I think he should really try and run by and kill off the probes, although uh, I guess what he's feeling here is if he can just pick off all the production buildings, then uh, he'll be able to uh, accomplish more. A lot of zerglings being pumped out here for July Zerg. Uh, they're kind of gathered up now. I guess that's probably actually all uh, mostly a result of um, when he was a little bit in a little bit of trouble. He was probably pumping out lings from both his hatcheries, all of his larvae. So um, he had those around anyway. Uh, so a lot of zealots here stacked up, so it's, it looks like things are pretty much equalized now. July Zerg has held off this kind of two-gate rush, and um, so th things have kind of evened out, I guess you could say, um, in a sense that they're both now deciding to advance toward... And oh my god, July Zerg, he sent out all those Zerglings. I didn't realize he'd sent them out of his base. He's going in for a major attack here. He's actually picking off a lot of Zealots. I thought those Zealots would help hold off a little bit better, but unfortunately, Jehun has separated his forces. He pinned them up against his gateway so that they couldn't be completely surrounded, but part of the result was that uh, some of his Zealots were cut off from the others. He wasn't able to concentrate his forces there, and it looks like July Zerg, he, uh, Jehun cannot bring his Zealots out. Uh, for, from behind those gateways because they'll, then they'll get picked off. So J July Zerg is just free to just pick off this um, gateway. That gateway is going to go down. It's going to completely open up that door. One cannon is going in, but I think July Zerg may be able to rush in there and kill off the cannon. Uh, Jehun's going to have to bring off probes to try and block for that cannon so that cannon can come in. The tables have been completely turned. July Zerg was barely trying to get his Zerglings out to block for the Sun Colonies when it, while they came in. And in, in this time, uh, Jehun having to bring probes and Zealots uh, and try and form a blockade to block for those cannons while they come in. Uh, kind of the converse uh, thing going on there. So July Zerg not quite able to break in there, unfortunately, and, and uh, not able to do a ton of long-term damage. He took down one gateway. He took down a lot of... Um, uh, uh, probes and now he's sneaking the zerglings in those zerglings are actually they're not um, uh, try, He's not going to try and attack with them. I think he was just July Zerg does this a lot actually where he'll send in a little squad of zerglings to try and run past To try and get a couple of zerglings in to, to do a scout and uh, so that's what he's doing here Is he's he's, he's obviously going to try and be annoying with that zergling try and pick off a probe or two if he can But uh, for the most part he just wanted to see what what Jehun was doing if he had more gateways behind there or if he was teching up or if he was getting, um, you know, working towards a, a Templar attack or something like that. Um, so he knows what he knows what uh, Jehun is doing now. Uh, he, I don't think he's no. The Zergling died. He didn't see the robotics facility, so he doesn't know that particularly is going on. But he knows that he's not going to have to worry about um, just a mass zealot push or a mass dragoon push or something like that early on. Um, and Jehun obviously knows what uh, July Zerg is doing. He sent in a probe earlier, and. Uh, uh, now he's um, 
got his Corsair, so the Corsair is going to be able to run around and see whatever it needs to see here. 